So beginning our broadcast today, you may remember that back in June, ag producers were left in limbo when the Ninth Circuit Court in California vacated the EPA's approval of several dicamba products. The last week, EPA Administrator Andrew Wheeler announced the approval of three dicamba herbicides for use over the top of dicamba tolerant soybeans and cotton. It will expire in 2025. The new five-year registration was granted for Extendamax and Ingenia, in addition to the re-registered dicamba herbicide Tavium. All three products will require a nationwide June 30th cutoff date for use in soybeans and a July 30th cutoff date for use in cotton, regardless of growth stage. Additionally, the agency made clear they will limit states' abilities to add further restrictions to the federal labels. Still, there are some restrictions and safety guidelines you should know about before using these products. One of the biggest things, of course, is the downwind uh, buffers and so forth, especially those with endangered species. And it's been increased as much as 310 feet. And there's some other restrictions in there. Now you can go a little bit less and you can read the label on that if you have a hooded sprayer and some of those things. But I always caution people on the downwind, uh, be really extremely careful on that, even if you meet the minimum requirements and so forth, because we know wind in Nebraska here can be a real problem and so forth. And if you have a center pivot, after about eight hours of application, uh, consider running that pivot around uh, if the soil is not too wet. But you don't need a lot of water. It showed that uh, 4100 was almost as good as two thirds of an inch in reducing volatility afterwards. That's one of the restrictions. Another one is adding a pH buffering agent. And we know from past experience that uh, when we add some of these products to the uh, water and so forth, it lowers the pH, especially if it's fairly low to begin with, and that increases volatility. So that's another one that's really important. And then one other thing to follow up on, they're trying to make it a little bit easier to comply with the label and understand the label uh, for application. But all these things are really critical and like I say, make sure you always check the label out. Really critical to do that and make sure you comply with the label. A fourth dicamba herbicide, Fexapan, was not included in the decision. Wheeler also expressed confidence that the new label changes should sufficiently address the problems with the original 2018 registrations. State pesticide regulators have urged the EPA to implement a nationwide cutoff date for dicamba herbicides for the past three years. To see the full labels for these three herbicides, you can visit beta.regulations.gov.